how's it going? I am so excited that we were finally able to place the trees that we got in early this spring. You remember that huge load of big trees? That's what we're working with. So now that we have everything placed, the next couple of days we're gonna spend planting them. I think it's gonna take two days anyway. So we're in the back garden right now, and look at all of these. We have them relatively close to, I think, what their final locations are going to be. You can see they span this whole fence line all the way down to the corner. About half of them made it into this area and then half up front in the south garden, which is where we're gonna start planting today. In fact, I think Paul and Aaron are out there getting everything set. So when we plant big loads of trees like this that have huge root balls, we do rent a skid steer with a 36 inch auger. It makes planting so much easier, especially up in the south garden. Over here, it may not be as big of a deal uh, because this ground has been nurtured for a lot longer than the ground up there. Up there we have a ton of hard pan and we're working on adding organic matter and compost and things like that into the soil. Um, as time goes on, it will get easier probably to dig up there, but it is really tough. So having the auger is really helpful. So we rented it for a couple of days so that we could get this project hopefully done. Our approach in this back garden is pretty much what we're shooting for in the south garden, but it's much more impactful here because there's so many more in a condensed space. What we're shooting for here is a really thick mixed border because this is kind of the backdrop of our property. We see it through the Hartley and we would really like for it to be pretty all four seasons. So heavy on winter interest first. Um, some really good fall color, some really nice vertical height. Um, just a really good mixture of things. So I think this is going to be a really good start. I did leave some spots because I do need some red leaved trees and then some summer interest in some areas. Um, but this will be a border that we will develop over the period of several years. So we have things like blue spruce, there's birch, uh, pine, cedars, uh, there are more pines down this way. Also we have a sensation box elder right here which is a Acer nagundo. It's in the maple family. It does not attract box elder bugs. <laughs> it's a common comment I see whenever I feature this tree but it's an amazing tree. I love it but just more things as we move down that way. So like I said, we're gonna be doing this area probably tomorrow, unless everything goes really well up front. We thought it would be better to start up front because there's more elbow room up there. We can get our rhythm with the skid steer again. We don't use a skid steer very often, usually once a year when we have a big bunch of trees we need to plant, we'll rent one. And it always takes a few trees to kind of find your rhythm. And when you have more space to do it and you're not working around other things like we are in here, it's a little more comfortable. But we'll walk through each area when we're done with it. I'll go over the specs of the trees and kind of explain our positioning and why we put what where. So let's head up front and see how the guys are doing. All right, dude, you ready to load up? Let's go to the gator, dude. Oh, you guys, just looking at these trees back here. Oh, it's gonna be so pretty. It actually got down to 25 last night. I had to cover a few things out here, but I'm really thankful. Everything's looking really good and I can already tell I'm gonna have to shed a layer pretty fast. It's so weird how warm it gets during the day and then how frigid it is at night. Oh yeah, Aaron's out here ready to roll with the tractor. I'm gonna go around this way probably. Grass is kind of wet. I don't really want to drive on it. So here's another prairie fire crab apple. That's gonna be so pretty. Oh, and we've got a spruce right over here. Oh gosh, this is a beautiful tree. Prairie fire crab apple, tri-trunk. The one in the back has got four trunks actually. Gorgeous winter color, look at that. And winter structure, honestly. I mean, beautiful globe on these. Maybe it would have been better had we got them in the ground a tiny bit sooner before they started to leaf, but I don't think it's gonna make much of a difference. But everything we're planting today is B&B. &B. So everything's in a metal cage that we're gonna cut off. We're gonna make sure to remove those, any string, that we might see. So any of the string around the burlap, all of that has to be cut off. It's not as necessary to get the burlap off unless it's been like treated or wax. There's some burlap that doesn't break down very fast. This stuff you can already see starting to fall apart. So it's not super necessary to remove all that. We do just whatever is easy to get off the root ball. And here comes Paul with the auger. All right guys, so we're just gonna start in hopefully Hopefully we will get this done today. We're gonna to be using Biotone Starter Fertilizer, Land and Sea Compost and all the holes. We'll probably introduce water before we pack the soil in around the root balls, but we'll try to get some good close-ups. And then in the end, we'll do a walkthrough.
well, that's not exactly what you want to have happen. We hit a water line while planting tree number five, that one right there. So at this point, we have to wait until the water drains so we can see what kind of damage we have going on out here. Thankfully, it's in kind of the wide open. Um, if we have to do some digging, which I think we're gonna have to because we pulled some of the two wire, which is the wire that runs our irrigation system. We also pulled some of that up at the same time and we don't know at what point it broke. So we're gonna likely have to trench back up that <laughs> That whole area but again it's it out in the wide open so it's not as big of a deal as if it was like needing to go through grass or flower beds or that kind of thing and this kind of thing you just can't anticipate so we're just gonna move on and keep planting yeah so here's the wire right here that's what we pulled up you can see the conduit it was going through right there so anyway that's the uh, two wire that runs all of the irrigation over here and a good portion of the irrigation around this south garden. But in other happy news, look at the Vanderwolf pine. Isn't that gorgeous? And the cedar right there, which we did stake up because the root ball was a little squirrely on that one. Uh, so we staked it up from three different sides and we're just gonna make sure to keep it really well watered. But it's a gorgeous tree, gosh. You guys, we are so lucky. So I called Benny, who he and his crew, they come out and help us with all kinds of stuff, brick edging, brick walkways. They're gonna start the floor in the Hartley this next week and they help us set up all of our irrigation. So I uh, texted him and I said, Benny, <laughs> We just were digging a hole and made a huge mess, broke something, messed with the two wire for the irrigation system. And he just said, okay, we'll be there right after lunch. It's awesome. So they're over there working hard, getting it done. I honestly do not know what we would do without such good people around here. A lot of good help. Okay, so this is where we're at with the break. You can see the bigger pipe is the one that had the water in it. And the smaller one running right alongside it was the conduit that had the two wire in it. So they got it all dug out and they went to go get the parts they need to fix it. In the meantime, we're gonna plant the next tree right over here. I'm just so thankful that today is sunny and still. Like we don't have any wind today. And that's really the best time to plant trees because you don't have them rocking all over the place. Quite nice. guys so it's a little bit later we had to stop and take a break because we wanted to let this hole kind of dry out a little bit uh, before we packed stuff back around the pipe just to make sure everything was running okay and it is and we started to kind of hand shovel dirt in here and decided to get the bucket on the tractor so that we could fill it in quickly and then we can get this last spruce planted also we did mark with white flags on either end of where this pipe runs because we are going to be planting the tree in the same general location but of course over from where the pipe is. Uh, so we just wanted to make sure, and now we know. We know exactly where this thing runs, so hopefully that won't happen again.
All right, guys, we got that last tree planted. So now I just want to walk you through and show you where we put everything out here. It's quite spread apart. So we're just going to start up here kind of in the front with the very first tree we planted, which is a prairie fire crab apple. So I'm standing down the grass pathway kind of at the entrance here. You can see the cut garden with the shed back there, uh, the berry beds, and then the prairie fire crab apple right in there. Oh, I just think it's so beautiful and I'm envisioning, so it grows 15 to 20 feet tall and wide. So I'm envisioning it just kind of coming out over the grass pathway a little bit, filling in this space with its beautiful red leaves uh, that kind of age a little bit green. So there's usually a little bit of red and a little bit of green in the canopy, bright pink spring blooms, and the color of the bark on these are just so beautiful. So this is going to look gorgeous even in the winter time. And it's starting off with such a perfect shape too. So this tree has the bright red persistent fruit that hang on for a good part of the winter. They provide food for the birds. Birds love these types of trees. So they're a really good bird attractor. And typically there's no mess on the ground at all from berries because the birds eat them all. And this one is a zone four through eight. You can see the drip lines that we have running around it right there and we leave these exposed all new drip that we have installed even though it would look way prettier to have this all covered with mulch we leave them open just so we can see if everything's working efficiently uh, working well before we cover it over so you can see i haven't planted anything from about here to here i mean there's a whole bunch of things planted in this section but i left this open so that we could start a pathway through here because our vision in the end is to have this whole thing filled to where you don't see fence you don't see our dumpster you don't see houses anything in this area all you see are beautiful plants with a curving pathway that just kind of disappears into this area. Uh, so it's gonna take a while, but I think it'll be really fun to, I don't know, just see how this, this area evolves. So in this just general area, I've got a bunch of the serendipity alliums right in here, a few little daffs, a coral berry shrub. There are some cantaloupe, supreme cantaloupe echinacea, some sedum in here. Can't remember what variety of sedum this is. I think it might be the coral jade. Yeah, I think that's what it is. Really kind of deep color. And then I've got a hydrangea and three string theory Amsonia, which you can barely see, but they are putting on new growth. The only other tree that made it into this corner is that Norway spruce, which looks perfect back there. And I planted some, is it blue bubbly Baptisia back here? Here's the new uh, lilac that we just put in. And there's a hoop size spruce. There's a gin fizz juniper and a Corinthian linden nearby. Oh, I just think these Norways are so cute. They look like Christmas trees. Now, in ideal conditions, these can get super big, <laughs> super big. Um, so I don't think here in our area they will, but like, I think they can top out at 60 to 70 feet tall, maybe even bigger, 30-ish feet wide. Our goal in the end, I don't think we're gonna actually have a lane back here. So like if this starts getting wider, um, it will be fine because we may turn this into more of a planting border area, which would be quite nice. You can see we've got a couple of North Poles we need to replace. Not too bad in this long of a line, but I just love the structure of these. I think they are just like perfection in an evergreen. Oh, love it. Zone two through eight on those, really winter hardy. Most spruces do really well in our areas. This type right here with the shorter needles, We'll have to see how it does in our full sun and our high winds. It's going to get the brunt right there, especially on the uh, west side of it. So we'll just have to monitor, see how things go. The rest are over in this corner. And while we're walking, you can see the daffs we planted last year. Oh, they look so pretty. This looks like, I think it's the Casada variety. Like aged to this beautiful creamy yellow, start kind of more bright like that. Oh, and daffodils are really good at naturalizing here. So they should spread around and should stay. In a space this big, it really does take a lot to make an impact. However, I feel like these are already making an impact. I love it. Oh, and as I walk this way, I can just see the layering already. Oh, okay, so we've got a red bud, a North Pole Arborvita. That was the next tree we planted, a Deodora cedar, and then there's a Vanderwolf pine. There's also another Corinthian over there with a royalty crab apple and some shrubs. So we have the new Showtime for Scythias here, the new lilac here, and there are a bunch of hydrangeas and things over here. It's just really shaping up. And you can see the tulip clumps. Well, right here, they start right here. So daffodils kind of stop, tulips start in. And these are, were these the Menton or the Dordogne? I can't remember. Either way, they're like an apricot color and they're tall and beautiful. They bloom later than the daffodils. So we should see a show from those here soon. Here is the cedar. I'm gonna to move to the other side of it. 
might be able to see it better. The sun's on the other side of it. Quick disclaimer about cedar trees in our area. They are marginal here. Sometimes we can get them to grow beautifully, kind of depends on where they're situated, and sometimes they struggle a little bit. They typically like a little bit more acidic soil than we have here, and they are a zone six, which we are now a zone six, but we were only moved to a zone six from a zone five a couple of years ago. So you just never really know what's gonna happen. We saw these, we could not resist, and we knew that it might be a little bit of a struggle, but we were kind of willing to roll the dice with how gorgeous these are. Hopefully we can see it a little bit better from this side. Now we did stake this one <laughs> from three directions you can see here just because it's so tall and the root ball really was small compared to how tall this tree is and we do get a lot of wind um, and we want to give this one the best start possible. The root ball was a little bit crumbly too so you know, we do our best to keep everything in one piece, uh, but this one kind of slid off of the tractor tines. So anyway, it's looking good right now. We're keeping it very moist. Um, hopefully we come through this year. This year will be the year, the telling year. So zone six through nine, they grow in ideal conditions, 40 to 50 feet tall, 20 to 30 feet wide, which it has the room to do that out here. Whether or not it likes its spot and gets that big, Time will tell. You know, once cedars are established, they're very heat and drought tolerant. So it's just getting them past that first two, three years, making sure that they're, you know, really well taken care of, monitored those first years. That is really the critical period. And I love when you're standing here, you can see the Diodora, but then I can see the red buds, forest pansy on this side and on this side further down and then the trio of um, arborvitaes. Every time we place an evergreen, I look at it from every single angle to make sure I like the way it looks layered with everything else. So to the left of this one, we have another Corinthian linden. There's really not anything planted in between. There's a few totem pole panicums that have been cut back right over there. And then the rest of the shrubs and like we've got some oh so easy Italian ice and some firelight prime hydrangeas up there, but we're going to be developing back this way this year. And then we've got a Vanderwolf pine. Oh, I love the way these look so soft kind of that bicolor blue and green kind of makes it look really silvery and sparkly and they're soft. So this one grows 20 to 25 feet tall and about 15 feet wide. Uh, so just imagine it being about double the width and then tall. So a nice vertical accent. We've got the royalty crab apple here, which is a tricolor or a tri trunk rather, and it has red leaves. So we've got the blue and the red. This one has green leaves, which will have yellow fall color. You can see our pile of wood chips we need to distribute, but we're waiting again where we've run all new drip out here. So we're waiting to make sure it's all functioning and then we'll start spreading out wood chips. And then the last one in this corner is another Norway spruce, which was the last one we planted where we, you know, broke the water pipe. <laughs> and you can kind of see how everything looks together over here. I mean, eventually once these things put on size and we get more shrubs, you actually won't be able to see the grass pathway anymore, which is the goal. And next we need to walk to that corner. On the way, we've got an autumn brilliance service berry that's just about ready to burst into bloom. So these you can buy as single trunk trees, you know, three trunks or kind of in the shrub form right here, which I really wanted to fill in this space. I think that's like 20 by 20 is what they get. Oh, I can't wait to see the blooms. Brilliant fall color on this one. Okay, so in this corner, we ended up planting one, two, three, four, five, six, seven things. And the centerpiece tree is the Canada Red Choke Cherry, which has five trunks five <laughs> and it's huge and gorgeous. Now you can see we've got a big bunch of mulch and stuff in here. We do need to scrape all of it away because like while this flame willow looks like it's planted down in a giant bowl, it's actually not. <laughs> Once we get all of this stuff spread out, it's planted right at soil level. This is right where the trees were all hilled in and all the mulch and I knew I wanted to have some things back in this corner so we decided to go ahead and just plant and then just take care of the mulch later. <laughs> oh but you guys, this tree gets covered in white blooms in the spring. It hasn't bloomed yet, so we're gonna get to see that. In fact, I see some of its bloom like buds starting up there. Uh, grows about 25 to 30 feet tall and 15 to 20 feet wide. It is a zone two through 10. Two, that's so cold. And they're not uh, bothered by anything in our area in terms of insect or disease, which is fantastic. We don't have to worry about this tree. Uh, typically they have kind of a bicolor appearance on their leaves, like a purplish green, uh, taking on a little bit more purple. Right now it's looking fairly green, but you can see on the ends here, those are the bloom buds right there. 
and they're just covering the ends of all of these branches. It's gonna be glorious. And then I'm backing up again because I want you guys to see all the layers. Now this is a Kwanzaa cherry that was in our front yard that Chad moved for us last year. It took on a little bit of a lean so we might try to correct that back. I'm not really super concerned about it though. It's architectural, right? <laughs> I don't know, it's all butted up though. It's gonna be gorgeous with its double pink blooms. I'm super happy that it lived and that it's still here. Uh, right here we have a weeping white spruce, uh, which we do have one of these up against our house because you guys, they only grow four feet wide. So like at the bottom here, it's not gonna get even that much wider, but they will get about 15 feet tall. So a really striking tall vertical accent. We have tons of room around here to develop and add shrubs, which the flame willows, you can see we still have four hilled in here that I wanted to wait on. I wanted to kind of get everything in the ground and see where we needed extra color. We might actually take these to uh, our friend's house and use it on their berm. I'm not real sure where they're gonna end up, but I've got three in the ground here. Oh. Now, if you were to leave these alone, they would grow 15 to 20 feet tall and wide. <laughs> like massive, like totally filling in this space. Which, you know, if you've got a huge area you need to fill in, what a great thing to plant uh, because they have such beautiful color. But if you cut them back to the ground every year, they will grow to about the six foot size and stay there. Uh, so we might do an every other year approach on the prune back. Uh, we'll see what happens. But they usually have better color too on new branches, kind of like dogwoods. So if we cut them back on the regular, we'll have bright kind of fiery looking stems in, in this area in the winter time. And then back in here, we have another Norway spruce, which I think will be beautiful filling in this space, being a beautiful green backdrop. It does look like I need to tip it a little bit. I need to pack some dirt in on the backside. You know, the first day or two after we pack them in as good as we can and then we water and usually watering them helps settle everything in and so we'll come back through a day or two after we plant and kind of just rectify anything that looks like it might need it um, so that one looks like it might need a little bit just ignore all the plant cans on the ground but look at the layers so we've got the cherry and the choke cherry and the evergreen this green evergreen blue evergreen the beautiful catsora tree back there which when it leaves out I didn't even realize it's bright red when it leaves, leaves out so we've got some amazing layering happening back here and it is making me so excited so again atlas cedars hopefully it really likes its spot uh, we have this one staked up as well i think we need to pull it back this way a little bit it was a little squirrely trying to get that one uh, to stay upright i'm not sure why but anyway zone six through nine these in ideal conditions can grow 40 to 60 feet tall 30 to 40 feet wide which I've never seen one that big here. So I don't think we have any uh, cause to think that it's going to get that big, but you know, if it did, great. You can actually see the yellow fluffy arborvita right back in there, kind of glowing. And the thing about the spruces, the pines, the cedars that we put in today, they're all really slow growing. So they're not gonna get enormous anytime soon. The flame willows, uh, the choke cherry, and the prairie fire crab. So the non-deciduous trees, those will grow pretty quickly. The willows are the fastest. And that's why we decided to go bigger on some of these things. The evergreens in particular, we just know that if you uh, get bigger evergreens, which they are more expensive, so we don't always do that. We've got a lot of small ones around here too. Um, but we knew that we would be paying for so many years of growth and that was that felt worth it to us in certain areas out here we kind of wanted instant impact there's one more tree over here i need to show you this one right here vanderwolf pine uh, so before we were along the exterior with all the rest of those and the uh, interior here as far as winter interests go we have the vanderwolf the trio of spring grove arborvitas and a scotch pine over there but you can see if we get close how the soil has settled look at that no matter how hard we try to pack that soil in, it always seems to settle a bit. So we'll be checking all of those and fixing that, packing in soil, making sure there are no air pockets, and then the tree should be really happy. This one had kind of an interesting shape <laughs> because like you can see the leader, like it's straight up and down, but it goes out to this side so much. I'm thinking like maybe I should come along and shear it a bit because especially from the other side, it does not look straight. Like from this side, it kind of looks like it's leaning to the right, but it's actually not. Like if you look at this part of the tree, that's straight. It's just this little boop off the side. Mm, I don't know. And that is gonna be it for day one of planting trees. We've got them all pretty much done out here in the South Garden other than those four flame willows. 
which like I said, may or may not end up here. Uh, either way, it's exciting to see things change and fill in. I was feeling by the end of last year that everything was looking really pretty out here. I was, I felt like we made a huge dent and we did. Like when you actually look at what the area looked like, the, the pasture it was in the beginning of the year and what it looked like in the end, we really did get a tremendous amount done, but boy, those shrubs and little perennials that you plant, especially the first winter, you know, they don't have any leaves on them or you've cut the perennials back or they've died back. And so you don't really see anything. So all winter long, I'm like, Is, are there things still out there? <laughs> I swear it was looking a little more full, but now seeing things bud and leaf out this spring, it's just exciting. And I can't wait to just keep going in this area and just add things as we find things that we like. It's just a freeing area just to do that. I love it. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Stay tuned for part two. We're going to go get that started here uh, in the next day or two, <laughs> and we will see you in the next video. Bye.